Non-deterministic finite state automaton are a little bit different than deterministic ones. With deterministic ones, you only have one path straight forward with all of your nodes to all of your other nodes or states, while a non-deterministic finite state automaton, you can have choices. <laughs> So for example, there might be a state where A takes you to Q1 and to Q2. It's just up to your choice. So what you're seeing here is an example of an NFA. So we start at the left at Q0, and then we're trying to make it to our accept state Q9 on the right. And there's a few ways that we can do that. And I'll tell you the purpose of this. This is supposed to tell you when you have a multiple of 25. So you can think of it in terms of like um, uh, change or something. So for Q0, if we give it 25, then what we do is we go to Q8, and because there's nothing there, this is the empty string, we can automatically go to Q9 and accept it. Or if we do Q0 and we give it nothing, we can go to Q8 and give it nothing and go to Q9. So before we couldn't give it nothing and move on. But these little E's here, these little empty strings say that without reading any inputs, you can go to the next state and then see what happens. So for example, with um, Q0, let's say we take five and we go to Q1 and then we take 10 and go to Q10, we can either put in another 10, which can keep on the train, or we can take the empty string, go down to Q3 and see if we can accept a five. But there's no 25 in that Q10, so if Q10 gets 25, it's going to fail. So we also don't need to put all of our options here. So if we have 5, 10, 25 in the empty string, not every node needs all of those. If you look at, say, Q6, for example, down here, the only two things coming out of it are 5 and 10. So if we get 25, what happens? Well, it just fails. That branch closes, and it's no longer accepted. So we have to basically keep trying all the possible combinations. So I want to show this to you with a mini finite state machine, and we're going to parse A, A, B, A, B. So Essentially what's going to happen is we're going to start at Q0 and then we're going to take in A. Now what's going to happen here? Well, either A can go back to Q0 by following that first path or it can split and then go to Q1. So there's two different paths that can take, either the Q0 path or the Q1 path. So now what's going to happen is we're going to parse another A. And what are our options now? Well, if we go from Q0, we can either end up in Q0 again, or we can go to Q1. But if you're in Q1 and you hit A, you must then go to Q2, where you're accepted. Uh, so I'm just going to put the little circles around the accepted ones, but we're still not fully done yet because we need to go through the whole string. So now we can go B. So if we get a B from Q0, we're going to go to Q1. If we get a B and we're in Q1, we are going to go also to Q1 again. And if we're at Q2 and we get a B, what's going to happen is we're going to end up rejecting it because we don't know what to do when we get B. So uh, right now we're in two states in Q1. So B has forced us there no matter what. If we're in Q2 and we get a B, it's bad. Now, we also have to take into account the fact that we could move and do nothing. So we could go from Q1 to Q2 just with the empty string. So we can continue this path. We can say, by the way, this is by the empty string. This is the other option that we have. So now we're going back and we're doing our fourth A. So the Q1 that's at A is now going to go to Q2 and possibly be accepted. If we're at Q2 and we get A, it's going to die because at Q2, we cannot take anything more. So at this point, uh, we've already been pushed from Q1 into uh, Q2, and we still need to parse one more letter, which is going to be B, and at this part, Q2 is also going to die. So no matter which path that we take, we cannot end up with A, A, B, A, B. This is just not going to be acceptable because as soon as we get our first B, we're going to end up in Q1. 
And as soon as we get our A after that, we're going to end up in Q2. So um, as soon as you get as soon as you get a B, then an A, you are now trapped. That has to be the end of your string. So in this case, this state machine does not accept A, A, B, A, B, because no matter which path we take with all of our options, they all end up being closed off. So let's take a look at the formal definition of an NFA. It's pretty similar to DFAs. Uh, there's going to be one change, which is the transition function. So Q is going to be the set of our states. So if we're taking a look at our mini finite state machine over on the right, Q is going to be the set containing Q0, Q1, and Q2, because those are the three states that we have. Our alphabet is going to be all of the symbols that we have. So we're always going to have the empty string in a finite, uh, in a non-deterministic finite state machine. We're going to get A, because that's one of the letters we're using, and we're going to get B. Now the transition function is going to look a little bit different. So we're going to get all of our inputs. So our inputs are going to be either A, B, or the empty string. And the states that we're starting with are either going to be Q0, Q1, or Q2. Now we're dealing with options. So when we take a state and a member of our alphabet, we're going to get a set out of it because there's going to be maybe just one possibility, no possibilities, or multiple possibilities of what we can get. So for example, if we're at Q0 and we pick A, well, we can either go back to Q0 or we can go to Q1. So for Q0 A, we have a choice. So this is going to be a set containing Q0 and Q1. Now, if we get Q0 and we get B, well, we have only one choice. We can only go to Q1. Now, if we get Q0 and we get the empty string, we don't go anywhere, so that's just an empty set. So we can repeat this. Uh, Q1 and we get A, where do we go? Well, we go to Q2. Uh, what about if we get Q1 and B? Well, then we're just gonna be set back to Q1. Now, we do have to write these as sets, um, for consistency, because again, we're going to sets of nodes rather than just an individual node. So a set can contain one thing, that's okay. Uh, Q1 and the empty string, what's going to happen is we're going to go to Q2. Now what happens when we're in Q2? It doesn't matter what we get, we're being sent nowhere. It is being rejected. So uh, what's our start state? Our start is going to be Q0. And then our final states, F, this is just going to be the set containing Q2, because that's the only node that is accepted. So these are NFAs. Uh, there's not really that much more to do with the definition or background. In future videos, we're going to show that NFAs and DFAs are equivalent. Take a look at regular languages and then show how to connect those with um, NFAs.